Perfect. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Are you not entertained? You will f- be entertained. <laughs> You'll be, f- You'll enter- be f- entertained. so entertained. I have to go to the airport. Um, I have to fly. I'm flying to London. Yeah, you were explaining that. So, yeah. We finally reached peak culture. On the latest episode of JRE, Rogan dressed up for Halloween as a random guy who looks like him wearing a wig. He shot an arrow at Elon's Cybertruck, and then he ordered a double pineapple double anchovy pizza delivered to the studio. Meanwhile, Cringo Puppy dressed up as a prime bottle and posted it on Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, Rogan uploaded the first two hours of this two hour 40 minute episode onto Twitter with the ads embedded in the video using the hashtag ad, which Elon then retweeted. Meanwhile, Bupper was still dressed as a prime bottle. But wait, speaking of power bottoms, Elon Musk started taunting Mark Zuckerberg, challenging him to a fight anytime, anywhere, in any style. Buck, buck, buck. Well, maybe he's listening. Suck, suck, suck. Suck, suck, suck. suck, suck. (laughs) (laughs) I'll go to him into fighting using taunts. It might work. So I'll tell you what, this was easily my favorite episode of JRE in recent memory. It perfectly captured old school JRE mixed with one of his biggest friendships. This represented Rogan's full character arc. I'm telling you, this is peak culture. It's all downhill from here. This would have been the perfect finale episode of JRE. Am I the only one who thinks Joe ordering pizza with Elon Musk on his podcast is straight up outrageous? Hmm, maybe I am. But we'll come back to that because first, I want to start with this Cybertruck business. This was so random. Elon drove over to the JRE studio in a Cybertruck and he was telling Joe about all the recent testing they've been doing. Oh my God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. (laughs) Hang on, not that testing. So Elon's whole shtick was, if you're going to build a truck, one of the most important things is that it's tough. I mean, you're not going to build a truck that's weak. And as part of this toughness test, Elon shot all kinds of things at the Cybertruck to test its impenetrability. That's a big word. But when Rogan heard, he wanted to put it through one of his own tests. There are three demonstrations. One of them people are aware of, which is, uh, you know, emptying a Tommy gun into the side of the car, um, a shotgun, 45 and a 9mm, and no penetrations. Wow. And that's, that com- it comes that way from the factory. Can I try it with an arrow? Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> you think so? I mean, a, 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 I bet I can a get crossbow in there. might. I have a 90-pound compound bow that shoots 520-grain arrows at 300 feet per second with a I think an arrow, razor-sharp I, broadhead. We're going to try it right now if you want. Let's do it right now. Let's try it now. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Sick. We'll be right back. I had a Look at the tip of the broadhead. That's impressive. Hey, cutie. Uh, Thank you. you. Well, now we know. So uh, we uh, just shot an arrow into it, and it, it barely scratched it. I've never heard Elon laugh so much before. He was really chilled and loosened up in this episode. He was having a few drinks. They were having a laugh. But then he got kind of hungry, so they ordered pizza. Mercury yeah. poisoning from tuna is a real thing. You can get arsenic from sardines, too. I found <laughs> that out the hard way. Really? Yeah. Ate too many sardines? Yeah, I, ate my, I got my blood work done, and uh, the doctor says, you have arsenic in your blood. And uh, I go, is someone poisoning me? He goes, no, it's very, very low level. <laughs> he's he like, said, it's like, you, is your girlfriend angry at you? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, do you eat a lot of fish? Like that. And I said, yeah, I eat like three cans of sardines a night. That's and, a lot of sardines, man. Yeah, I love sardines. I mean, uh, yeah, it's. I love them. 
you I really, love I really sardines. do. I've always loved sardines. Okay. I love them. But turns out, like, you can't eat too much of it because they, they, they're... Yeah, they're not good for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a little sardines once in a while, but not three cans a night. Well, for me, it's like I come home late from the comedy club, but I want something easy to eat. And I, wanna, I don't want to so stop open a can of fast sardines. food, so I open up a few cans of sardines. And I'll, you know, watch a little TV, eat a few cans of sardines. <laughs> I was doing so. it every night. <laughs> and then I stopped doing it, and I got my blood work done a couple months later. It was gone. I'm a fan of anchovies as well. Yeah. One of my favorite pizzas ever is pineapple and anchovy. Okay. Double pineapple, double anchovy. Wow. It's amazing. That's, it's the it? sweet and the salty, and then you got the tomato sauce and the cheese. <laughs> it's my favorite pizza. It's yeah. very good. I mean, as, as a kid, I was, like, very much against Hawaiian pizza. And as an adult, I like it. Hawaiian's good, yeah. but I'm telling you, anchovies and pineapple is yeah. the bomb diggity. That's the bomb <laughs> okay, diggity. I'll give it a shot. That's the bomb diggity. We, hey, wait, can we order some right now? Is uh, that feasible? I, I bet we could. Okay, let's try it. That'd be sick. Yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Did Elon just say, let's order pizza? Is that feasible? Wait, can we order some right now? Is uh, that feasible? I, I bet we could. Is uh, that feasible? <laughs> Who says that? Oh, man, he really needs to spend more time around actual humans and less time building rockets, electric cars, and wrecking Twitter. He's a strange dude, huh? So finally, this double pineapple, double anchovy pizza arrives, and, well, we got to see two rich dudes eating pizza. This looks awesome. That does look awesome. <laughs> you want a plate, Jamie? Get in there, sir. Grab a piece. All right, Let's sick. Go. <laughs> this is awesome. And uh, what's the name of this pizza place Living again? Life. Pizza Leone. Pizza Leone? Yep. Shout out to Pizza Leone. Oh, yeah. That really hit the spot. That's legit. I said this before, and I'll say it again. Joe ordering pizza on JRE with Elon Musk has to be one of the most outrageous things I have ever seen, not only on this podcast, but on any podcast. The sheer audacity to make us watch a conversation about Rogan's love of sardines and then pivot into his favorite pizza topping, followed by actually ordering it, then proceeding to record themselves stuffing their faces. Oh man, this is just so offensive. In fact, it was so offensive that I decided to put together a 60-second pizza ASMR compilation for you guys, and don't you dare turn down the volume or fast-forward this bit. Oh, yeah. I really hit the spot. That's legit. I was hungry. It's good, though, right? Mm -hmm. The combination... A pineapple and anchovy. Surprisingly good, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's good, Jamie. I bet. You want one? I don't. I would be offended. <laughs> All right. It's hard to mess with pizza, frankly. Unlike the creeps who used to run Twitter. I don't know why, though. This is terrible for sound. <laughs> we just, just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> like the subtitle chewing sounds. This is my last piece. <laughs> subtitle chewing sounds. <laughs> People are going to have to deal with it. This is my last piece. Are you taking it away? I don't think I'll ever get over that. That was just simply outrageous. So then anyway, after we were forced to sit through that grotesque exhibition of toxic masculinity, now with a full stomach, Joe proceeded to stroke Elon's ego with a question that turned into a monologue actually more of a love letter, and I'm still searching for Elon's answer. What is it like to try to juggle these different things in your mind on a daily basis? Like, what is it like to try to juggle X, Tesla, SpaceX, all these different things at the same time? It's a lot for a human brain to handle. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. My... It strains my meat computer. <laughs> I mean, do you need something like that, though? Does your meat computer need more problem solving than the average one? I mean, is this something like, if you only had one thing to work on, yeah. do you think you would get bored? Or you would get distracted? Or you would not be satisfied? Like, do you need these things? 
to be so complex and have so many of them simultaneously juggling them? Because <laughs> you, you didn't pick three easy ones. You no. picked three of the hardest things you could ever get into. You already detailed how difficult manufacturing is. Rockets, duh. Yes. It's, the cra it's one of the craziest things. Like, not Rock, only that, rocket science. completely innovative rockets mm -hmm. that land. Like yes. they that never happened before, so you're doing that, right? And then you said, you know what? We've got to save humanity. Let me go spend forty four billion on Twitter. Oh, man, that was expensive. <laughs> What's it worth? What's what do you think it was actually worth? Everything. Yeah, not for the market, <laughs> right? I mean, like <clears throat> for for humans, yes, I agree with you. I mean, I th I really genuinely do think this, and I've said this many times publicly. I think you did humanity an immense service, and yeah. that if that didn't happen, the narrative of this country would have gone further and further down that road to the point where people would have been scared to speak their mind. Wow, hang on. After watching it again with you guys, I think I just found the answer I was looking for. What do you think it was actually worth? Everything. See, this is the thing that I don't get about Rogan, right? He'll sit there stroking a guest for half an hour, the guest is clearly uncomfortable, and then the guest will crack a joke and Rogan will just refuse to acknowledge it. See, I wasn't kidding. This episode had all of Joe's signature moves in it. What I really enjoy is uh, reading the tweets. I guess you still have to call them tweets. Reading Posts the, or whatever. I, I don't have a good word for it, but... Yeah, you can't say the X's. But reading the... <laughs> well, uh, my X's live in Texas. <laughs> reading the words, <laughs> or I should say. Oh, I song. enjoy reading the words of people who proclaimed that they were leaving and going over to threads. Oh, come on, Joe. That was funny. The MPC made a joke. Honestly, that was a missed opportunity. But let's put jokes aside for a moment because Elon, the tough guy billionaire, was trying to pick a fight with another NPC and Joe switched straight into fight promoter mode. This was pretty good. So I'm excited we've kind of rekindled this Zuck versus Elon fire. No, I mean, he's checking out. What? That's, uh... I don't think he's checking out. Yeah, no, he's just checking out. Do you think so? Yeah. Buck, buck, buck. Well, maybe buck, he's buck, listening. Buck. Suck, 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 suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to him into fighting using taunts. It might work. Yeah. I mean, somehow or another, you got buck, him buck, to buck, agree suck, in the suck, first suck. place. <laughs> I was stunned. Surely he will respond to a taunt like that. Yeah, surely. <laughs> I mean, how can he resist? How can yeah, he resist? How can he resist? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just go, let's go full school schoolyard uh, taunting. What if there was like real um, consequences on the line? Like, what if you guys had a real bet? Okay, sure. Like the moderation team from X takes over moderation of Facebook if you win. No problem. Sounds good. And if he wins... Vice versa. It was a fight for civilization. Yeah. A literal fight for civilization. I mean, I'll do it. Wow. Heavy. True. Sure. And you wouldn't even train for this? No, I'd train a little bit. Train a little bit? Yeah. Like, how many weeks do you need? I mean, I, I don't have to train. I could do it, like, tomorrow. <laughs> I tried going to his house, actually. Did you really? Yeah, because he lives in Palo Alto. Um, and we're doing some... Um, you know, Tesla full self-driving testing. So I'm like, well, I've got to pick a destination. Did you press the button and go, doo -doo, navigate to Zuck's house? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's not far. He's like a, I think he's like three miles away from the Tesla, Tesla California headquarters. Wow. Um, but uh, it, it, I don't know if there's nobody there. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably in Hawaii. He was, according to a spokesman, he was traveling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it would have been wild if he was there. Yeah, what would you yeah, say? No, I, I literally, I, I, any time. I just thought it was funny um, to go like, you know, I'm coming over to your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> well, it's even more funny when it's two of the richest guys in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this has mad Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis vibes, except I can't decide which one's which. I get the feeling that Elon's massively overestimating his skill level. Sure, he's done some training over the years, but the guy's in terrible shape, and I can just imagine Zuckerberg grinding it out in the early hours of the morning, preparing himself for a clash of the titans. But then Elon pulled out this story, and I'm not going to lie, this has to be one of the creepiest things I've ever heard. I get what he was trying to say, but... I don't know. It just didn't sound right to me. You know, I, there, there's a, a friend of mine who is pretty good at fighting, um, but she weighs she weighs about half of what I do, and um, and I said, let me let me show you why there's weight categories in in fighting. 
Mm. And I'm going to do a move called the walrus, and, and you have to just, I'm just going to lie on you. I'm not going to put you in a lock or anything. I'm just going to lie on you. But I'm, I'm going to, you know, position myself such that it's hard to get off, get out from under me. Mm-hmm. And I just want to lie crossways on you, and, and you, you try to get, a, get away. And you won't be able to get away. Because you couldn't. Yeah, that's still weird. Sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. And this is where Rogan and Elon had a bit of a disagreement. Elon basically thinks that because he's 240 pounds, not 260, only 240, that he can pretty much pin down Zuckerberg easily because of their weight difference. For those of you who don't know, Zuckerberg's probably like half his size. But Joe started pushing back saying if a smaller guy has a much higher skill level, then it's not uncommon for them to dominate the bigger guy, especially in things like grappling. Either way, I don't think this fight will ever happen. They both have too much to lose because this would easily break the record for the biggest PPV in history. Imagine like a full MMA fight between these two tech titans. It would be absolutely insane. The only thing bigger would be Elon Musk versus Bill Gates, and we definitely know that's not going to happen. I actually think that Elon would be the one to make the excuse and pike out of this. Zuckerberg seems to be the kind of guy who would make the commitment and stick to it, whereas Elon's known for over-promising and under-delivering. But anyway, clearly I've just been having a laugh today. There's nothing too serious to see here, guys. This will go down as a classic episode of JRE. I really enjoyed it, so go check it out if you have time. Like I said at the beginning, the first two hours are on Twitter as well as Spotify, which is pretty cool. I still listen to it on Spotify though because I didn't want to have to keep Twitter open while I was listening. That's a major problem. I mean, who wants to keep Twitter open for two hours just to listen to a podcast? And it also made me wonder if Joe and Elon are lining up some sort of deal to get his podcast exclusively over to X after his Spotify deal expires in December. I made a video recently called Should Joe Rogan Retire, which you guys can go and check out if you haven't seen it but I actually think he'll try to stay on Spotify. I've been thinking about this a lot lately and reading all of your comments from my previous video, and I think I agree with you guys who are saying he'll stay. He really doesn't have that many options, and if he moves to Twitter, I think he could potentially get lost in there. Twitter isn't really built for long-form content. I know Elon's been trying to push Twitter spaces or whatever it's called now, but I've never really been interested in that. Think about what happened with Facebook, for example. Some of you might not know, but Facebook actually started hosting podcasts for a while, but eventually they just canned it because it wasn't really popular. Twitter's the same. People go there to scroll and read a few posts or look for breaking news or whatever. For Rogan to risk the biggest podcast in the world to move over to his buddy's platform, it just seems like a bad move at this point with too much risk. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about that. I wonder why Joe posted this episode on Twitter and what that conversation with Spotify would have been like and how all of that went down with making an agreement and so on and so forth. Maybe he'll explain it in the next few episodes. Who knows? Anyway, that's it from me, guys. Good chat today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Shout out to any new viewers. I hope you decide to subscribe. And of course, thank you to my regulars for always showing up for me. You guys are awesome. I'm out for now, so I'll catch you in the next one. So, yeah. I'm just excited that you're interested in doing it still. Sure. All right. Didn't you f*** your back up doing, like, sumo wrestling? Yeah. (laughs) 